Hello, welcome to another video. So today I'm looking at this My Touch Smart timer again, and uh, this time we're going to be uh, tearing it down. So it's got those tri wing screws on it. So I got a new screwdriver kit. This one's got a whole bunch of different bits in it, and I was going to go with the iFixit kit, but I ended up going with this one because it had a few things that just weren't available in that kit, and it, it has the nice narrow bits, so they're going to be able to fit inside the smaller holes on this. And you get these uh, triangle bits, which I've been seeing in a few different products. So I actually have a use for these. And uh, over here we have the tri-wings. So they start over here really tiny. I mean, that's that's a tiny bit. And that's got three three lobes on it. Yeah, just lots, lots of options. And then uh, tweezers. Uh, a little extender, a couple spudgers, suction cup, whatever that thing is. You know, just really... Good set of tools for a reasonably low cost. I'll leave a link to this down in the description. Just for comparison, uh, the video, original video of this was just kind of a general overview review, looking at how much power it used, things like that. I'll leave a link to that video as well. That'll be in the description, and at some point I'll leave it in the uh, during this video. So let's uh, let's crack this thing open, see what's inside, see how it works. If this last screw doesn't strip out. The secret shall be revealed. So there you can see it now, up close. Three lobes on those screws. Uh, I had to do it. All right. Well, that's interesting. So, well, not too much of a surprise. Our neutral just comes straight in, goes to our outlet block. The earth comes in straight to the outlet block, doesn't go anywhere else inside this. This is a non-isolated product, so it doesn't need to go anywhere else. And then the neutral loops back to the circuit board because there's no reason to pass all the current through. Um, it just needs to grab a little bit of energy from that. And then the hot line comes into the circuit board, into the relay here, and then bounces back over here to actually switch, actively switch these, these plugs on the output. So this tiny little board right here is the whole power supply for the unit and has a little battery. Looks like it is a capacitive dropper style. So that... Uh, probably is more likely the reason why we didn't see the power consumption change when we switch this relay on or off. So I do highly doubt that that is a latching relay. It's just that when it's not on, it's going to waste the extra power in a Zener diode. So the voltage doesn't shoot up too high to damage any of the circuitry that's on this board over here. And it's going to have a little battery charger circuit on there. Uh, just very simple my guess is this is a um, like a nickel metal hydride cell, something along those lines. But it looks like we've got a whole bunch more screws to take out before we get into that. Uh, there's not going to be much on this board. I can see our clock crystal here, which is going to be a 32.768 kilohertz crystal. And it's probably just going to be a blob on the other side of this. So i got to swap over to a small Phillips bit now it says in the inside they decided to go with those kind of bits uh, we can see that the the board here didn't use any uh, th there's no captive screws or anything we can see that's just a plastic threaded insert so nothing fancy there pick that right out so yeah not a surprise kind of exactly what I thought it was gonna be you have a little blob chip um, a few support components a couple capacitors resistors Nothing too advanced there. All surface mount jobs. And then on the other side, you got a couple LEDs and you have, um, there's actually a transistor for driving each one of those LEDs. And then there's a, a resistor for those and that's pretty much it. And then these little contact pads um, are actually the switches which make contact with these little carbon plates here. So when you push one of these in, you can see that that little carbon piece right there pushes out and makes contact with the PCB and that closes the switch. So all of the tactile feel, oh, lost a piece, that's for our LCD. So all that tactile feel entirely comes from this rubber mold. This little piece is just a frame, just a filler piece for the LCD. And we can see in there, there's a little strip that's called a zebra strip. And that is actually all the wires that connect over to the LCD. So if you look on this board, we'll see a bunch of contact pads. That's how this thing is communicating the information over to the LCD. And we got some really, really heavy soldered connections here. These are to our relay contacts. So that's what's actually um, doing the switching. You can see we have a resistor here 
that's coming in through our hot side that's coming in from our line cord and there's a capacitor here so this is just a drain resistor this is just a 470k ohm resistor to drain this capacitor when you shut the power off that way you can't get a zap off of these lines it is just a single resistor it is a higher power package but 120 volt rated for this so this would never see 120 volts ac rms uh, peak voltage on that would be 170 volts peak to peak 340 volts so you're you're probably okay um, this is a 250 volt rated capacitor that's just fine um, that goes into a bridge rectifier we have a little capacitor there and that goes straight to a big zener diode which is not a surprise at all that's a MELF package so our positive rail which is on this side comes around goes straight up to there goes into the ribbon cable and disappears the battery has no label specifically uh, but we can do a quick check on the, the voltage on that just see what it's got so that's reading 1.337 that's just a single cell, probably nickel metal hydride battery, and it's basically fully charged right now. There's really not too much to see on this board. It's very simple. This is a 24 volt relay, so the rough power supply voltage can be around that 24 volts. Um, there's a little transistor here that's just going to be switching the relay. There's a diode for protection on that. All this other circuitry is a little Zener diode here, and there's probably a resistor of fairly high value. Uh, it's a 47K ohm. That's most likely going to be charging the battery. Yep, that goes through here. So that's charging the battery. The battery just runs back over there. Oh, yeah, that's it. So, the t so one of the terminals, the negative terminal, is common. One of the terminals is switching the relay. One of the wires is the battery voltage going back, and one of them is the positive voltage uh, directly off of this, which is going to be about 24 volts. So this circuitry is actually operating at quite a bit. It actually does say plus 24 volts right on the board up here. So we know we're getting fairly high voltage into this thing. Well, that's about it. It's a fairly simple circuit. It could be a little more efficient. So if they use the switching power supply that was in the Meros unit, which there will be a link for that on the screen here if you want to see a smart outlet system. And I do a, a review of that and a teardown. Um, or if you want to watch the review of this one, that link is also up above. Uh, yeah, overall, it, it could be better. So there's some improvements that could be made here. You know, there's there's quite a bit of circuitry that goes into into this. F you know, and it would be more complex to add a little switching converter in here. Which, but yeah, all in all, not too bad. Seems fairly safe, simple. Uh, it's a good way to do it to have this separated. All right, let's do some reassembly. All right, go ahead and put these screws back in. The regular Phillips screws that they decided were okay for the inside, but the entirely different screws that they decided had to go on the outside of the case so somebody couldn't take apart what was very, very simple circuitry. Uh, really no surprises at all inside of this thing. Um, I was hoping it was a latching relay, but as it turns out, it's just, uh, it just burns the extra energy when it's not switched on through that Zener diode. One of the things that might be a concern is that Zener diode is probably going to get a little bit hot, um, but as long as they designed it to handle that, you know, you know, 0.7 watts or so that this thing was using it should be just fine. Last screw going in. All right, we'll plug it in. No fires. Seems to be working. I actually clicked in because it was in a time when it should be clicked in. So I can click this and you'll hear it click. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe and uh, yeah. Let me know if you want to see more content like this. So, you know, leave some comments down below.